We have the ability to manage our SharePoint installation via central administration. However, we can also administer SharePoint via a command line which is known as STS admin, STS ADM. Okay, so that command is found in C, Program Files, Common Files, Microsoft Shared, Web Server Extensions, 12 slash bin. So to get an idea of what can actually be run, you simply type STS admin and as you can see, if you type in STS admin and a number of parameters, you'll see that it has the ability to delete sites, delete webs, rename webs, restore, um, do all sorts of handy features. Now the advantage of using STS admin obviously is that you can script it uh, into a batch file and then you can schedule it. One of the important things to remember with SBS 2008 uh, and SharePoint is that there is no automated backup that is configured and run by default. So if you want to back up SharePoint information, you need to obviously ensure that your SBS 2008 machine is being backed up in total. However, if you wish to back up just SharePoint, there are two ways you can do it. You can do it through the GUI interface okay, in the central administration here, but probably the easy way is to schedule a command here that is STS admin minus DXE minus backup and then you put in the options to back up your site. This will create a single DAT file of all the information in your site. So again, you can create a batch file that does this backup, schedule it to run so it backs up to a single data file which then is backed up in the course of your normal backup. The advantage with this is that generally uh, creating and restoring from uh, this DAT file is much easier because you can create a simple generic SharePoint installation and then just restore the information back to the site. Uh, this can be less cumber cumbersome than working with database restores and file restores. So again, always something to keep in mind that it's a recommendation that you look at configuring the STS admin backup utility so that it takes a SharePoint backup as well as any other backups that you may currently be working with. So where do the SharePoint databases actually reside on the disk? So in this default installation, we find them on the C drive, Windows, SYSMSI, SSEE, MSSQL.2005, MSSQL and data. So again, they're buried quite deep inside the Windows directory on the C drive by default. So again, if we have a look in this directory, you'll see that here's our content white database called Shared Web DB, and you'll notice that its component file there is also a log. So again, what we can do is we can actually detach those databases from SQL, move them manually, and then reattach them. But if you were to perform that task, you need to ensure that you take not only the MDF file, but also the LDF, which is the indexing file. But please note that there are a number of other databases in here that are used by SharePoint. So again, what we have is we have an administration database, a configura configuration database, as well as our search databases. So as you can appreciate, as the content within SharePoint grows, what you'll generally find is that not only will the content databases grow, but also the search databases as well. And these will become quite large depending on the content that you have inside your SharePoint installation. So again, there are plenty of KB articles about how to make sure that they're kept trim. Uh, again, it's important to remember that by default all that information resides on the C drive and the recommendation is, is that it should be moved to another drive as soon as the installation is complete to allow more space and better growth. So what we can do to actually administer the, the databases at a low level is you'll find that SBS 2008 has installed 
the SQL management studio express so what this allows us to do is manipulate our content databases but to achieve this one little trick that you need to be aware of is that when you run this utility you need to right mouse click on it and select to run it as an administrator not doing that will prevent you from doing many of the management tasks so again simply find that utility SQL Server Management Studio Express, right mouse click and then select Run as Administrator. So I've already done that over here. So again, this is the utility. Now what we need to do is we need to attach to the SharePoint databases. To do that, there's a bit of a uh, convoluted string, which I've already pre-populated here. But basically what it is, is slash slash dot slash pipe slash ms sql dollar microsoft hash hash s s e e slash sql slash query okay so again a fairly convoluted string but once we've typed that in and we select connect with the windows authentication what we'll find is we are now connected to our version of SQL Embedded Edition. So here it is. If we open the databases, we'll now see that here's our shared web DB. So that's our content database for SharePoint. And again, I can right mouse click on this. I can select properties. And once I've selected properties, I can now manipulate that database, change any options, change any, utility, uh, change any settings to give me better performance, but generally you don't do that. So what I can do also, if you want to manually move these databases to another drive, perhaps that is not supported by the SPS wizard, you can right mouse click and as you can see under tasks, I can detach the database and then move it manually using file manager and then simply re reverse the process by doing an attached database um, and again, because SharePoint relies on SQL to provide it the connectivity to the data, it knows no difference. So again, you can use the SQL Management Studio Express to manipulate the databases in SharePoint if required. So another item that you may wish to consider as a, a good best practice is if you go to your database tree at the very top, select Properties, you'll come down here to memory and you'll notice that generally by default the minimum server memory is set to 128 but the maximum is set to some really huge number. Okay, What you can do in here, which is what I've done, is you can go in and you can trim that memory to suit the requirements of your machine. Now the reason that I've set this so low is basically this is obviously a demo machine and as you can see the demo is only running less than 2 gig of memory. So if you didn't believe that SPS 2008 can run in anything less than 4 gigs, well, there you go, there's evidence. But again, you can go in there and modify the memory. On SPS 2003, you normally had to achieve this through a command line. So again, the great thing about the management tool is that you can do all this via a GUI. So again, that's the basic underlying nuts and bolts of SharePoint and what it's relying on. So again, you've got a GUI interface, you've got a command line interface that you can manage it. The data resides on C drive in this convoluted directory under Windows. And again, to manipulate the databases, open the SQL Management Studio Express as an administrator. So that's the basics of the components of SharePoint. Now, Let's have a look at a few general tips and recommendations I would make when you first approach any SharePoint installation. So again, probably the first thing that you need to have a look at is that by default, no matter how you install SharePoint, unfortunately it's set to US regional standards. So again, go into your site actions, select site settings as an administrator, and then come down here to regional settings. So again, we can change the locale to suit where we are. We can change the sort order, the time zone, the clock, the days of the week, all that sort of thing to suit and then select OK.